فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن the explanation of the book ثلاثة الأصول written by شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى and we stopped at where the author, rahimahullah, says, وَأَنْوَاعُ الْعِبَادَةِ الَّتِي أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِثْلُ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْإِيمَانِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَمِنْهُ الدُّعَاءُ وَالْخَوْفُ وَالرَّجَاءُ وَالتَّوَكُّلُ وَالرَّغْبَةُ وَالرَّهْبَةُ وَالْخُشُوعُ وَالْخَشْيَةُ وَالْإِنَابَةُ وَالْإِسْتِعَانَةُ وَالْإِسْتِعَاذَةُ والاستغاثة والذبح والنذر وغير ذلك من العبادة التي أمر الله بها كلها لله تعالى والدليل قوله تعالى وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعوا مع الله أحدا وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعوا مع الله أحدا فمن صرف منها شيئا لغير الله فهو مشرك كافر the Sheikh, Sheikh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, he now goes into speaking about the types of ibadat there are. The Sheikh rahimahullah, he goes into the types of ibadat there are. And as we always do, we categorize the ibadat into two types. And we say that the ibadat or ibadam the word ibadah, when we speak about it, it refers to two things. Okay? The first one is at ta'abud, and the second thing is al muta'abbadu bihi. At ta'abud means the action that the person is coming with, how he needs to come with the action, right? The one who's doing the action, how he needs to do the action. The person has to do it with kamalu, kamalu al khudu'i ma'a kamal al mahabbah, complete. Humiliation with complete love. That's at ta'abud. And then we have the al muta'abbadu bihi. It's what you're going to worship Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with. So, how do you do the ibadah? You do it with complete love and you do it with complete humiliation. Okay. But then the question arises is that what's a ibadah? What is a ibadah? Which is the second thing. I mean, what is it that I do with complete love and complete humiliation? Does that make sense? What is it that I have to do with complete love and complete humiliation? We say that it takes us back. To, it takes us to the second point, which is al mutaabbadu bihi. It is, as Sheikh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah says, anything that meets this definition, and that is, Ibn Taymiyyah says in his book, Al Ubudiya, page forty four. He says, اسم جامع لكل ما يحبه الله ويرضاه من الأقوال والأعمال الظاهرة والباطنة. It's a general term. Everything which Allah تبارك وتعالى loves and is pleased with. Okay. So عبادة. For you to know what you need to do with complete love and complete complete humiliation, you would have to understand this definition. Okay. It is a, it's a general term in which for everything which Allah Taala loves and and is pleased with. How would one know Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala loves something and is pleased with it? It's two ways you could find out. There's two ways that a, a person can know something Allah Taala Taala loves and is pleased with. The first one is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commands you it. And he tells you to do it. Okay? So it becomes ma'muram bihi, something you need to come with. 
And the second one is أو مخبرا عنه بأن الله جل وعلا يحبه ويرضاه. Or the second which second point is, or the second way is that you're informed that Allah loves it, and you're told that Allah loves it and He's pleased with it. So those are the only two ways. And who can do those two? The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. He's the one who commands you to do it. And he is the one, alayhi salatu wasalam, who tells you and informs you that the Prophet is pleased with this, alayhi salatu wasalam. Now we found out, pay attention here, now we have come to know what Allah is pleased with and what Allah loves, how to find out. Huh? Now the Shaykh says, it's a general term, everything which Allah loves and is pleased with. And he goes on to saying, من الأقوال والأعمال. So ibadah is only two things. If anybody asks you ever what ibadah can be, it's only two things. A ibadah can only be a speech or an action. A ibadah can only be a speech or an, an action. So it's only those two. Al ibadat tanqasimu ila qismain. Ibadah is divided into two. This is all the statement of Ibn Taymiyyah alayhi rahmatullah. Okay? Ibadat which are qawliya. Ibadat that are ac- uh, speeches. And ibadat which are amaliyya, actions. Good. Walaysa thamma qismun thalithun. And there's no third type. So don't think to yourself there's a third type. But Ibn Taymiyyah tells us that each of each and every one of them has a zahira and a batina. So what did he say? Ismun. جامع لكل ما يحبه الله ويرضاه من الأقوال والأعمال الظاهرة والباطنة. The speech has an internal and an external, and the action has an internal and it has an external. Okay. From the things that will fall under. From the things that will fall under the qawliya, uh, which is the first one, which is speech, the internal of the speech is, or more like on the tongue, external, because the act, the speech is too internal and external. The speech that's internal is the heart, right? And the external is the tongue, right? The th- the ones that are on the tongue, the speech that's on the tongue is such as Mithlu Dhikri, the remembrance of Allah subhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Tilawatul Quran, reading in the Quran, Kalimatul Ma'ruf, going out there, commanding the good, prohibiting the evil. Those are Ibadat Qawliya Lisaniya. The second type is Qawliya Qalbiya. Sah? is speech that are internal which is the heart and this is where the intention enters intentions are qawlul qalb and are you with me that's why why those who utter their intentions they fall into innovation you shouldn't utter it it's qawlul qalb (coughs) because it's the speech of the heart and you don't it should stay in the heart so it's not qawlul lisan. They're confusing qawlul lisan with qawlul qalb. Are you with me? So intention falls here. And motives. Very good. And then the second type of ibadat is what? Ibadat amaliyah. And it has two types, which is qalb and what? So those which are qalb. And those which are, and those which are jawarih limbs. So the Sheikh rahimahullah, he brings amal uh, from from the amal al qalb, and the amal al jawarih. We're going to see them. Sheikh's going to bring examples. Amal al qalb is, for example, ikhlas, sincerity, right? Sincerity. Is a'malul qalb 
Nia is qawlul qalb. Uh, intention, because intention can be bad if he wants. Sah? Class is when it's good. The amalul qalb. Tawakkul is amalul qalb. Okay? It's action of the heart. So the Shaykh, rahimahullah, what he's going to do is, he's going to give us many of them. A dhabh is amal, is amal, amalul jawarih. You see? A nether is amalu al jawarih. So the Shaykh, rahimahullah, is going to give us a lisan. It could be another. Huh? Each one we're going to see it, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to study it properly. But if you see ibadah, this is where it enters. It's going to enter one of those, those four. And that's why it's very important for the person to understand the, the haqiqah and the reality of what ibadah, the real meaning of ibadah. I personally believe the person who dealt with this issue of ibadah very well, very well, extremely well, and done a good job on it, is Abdurrahman Yahya al-Mu'allimi, rahimahullah ta'ala. His kitab, Raf'u al-Ishtibah, Fi Ma'ana al-Ibadati wal-Ilah. The whole book is called Fi Ma'ana al-Ibadati wal-Ilah. It's called Raf'u al-Ishtibah. You know what Raf'u al-Ishtibah means? It means removing the ambiguity and the, huh, and the doubt and the... Uh, the thing, the, the fact that it's not clear, and معنى العبادة والإله, the meaning of عبادة and what إله means, the react to bring it to you, and the way he did it, صراحة it is profound, profound. الشيخ عبد الرحمن المعلمي. So this kitab, if Allah gives us time, it will be one book that we would have to go through, inshallah تعالى. Go through it, because the people who are falling into major shirk. The door they try to enter from to spread their arguments is from the qadiyah of and the lack of def the fact that the definition of ibadah is not put in place place this is where they try to this is where they try to benefit from so the shaykh rahimahullah he says the types of ibadah alati amarallahu biha so I look pay attention to here what did he say alati alati amarallahu biha that which Allah commanded so what did we say? What did we say? How many ways can we know that Allah is pleased and He loves something, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Two ways. The first one we said is ma'muran bihi, that He commands it. And the second one, what did we say? O mukhbiran anhu. So these ones that He's bringing, they fall under that which has been commanded. Okay? Those which are commanded. Naam. Mithla, like al-Islam. And al-Iman. And Al Ihsan. By the way, we're not going to touch on Al Islam and Al Iman and Al Ihsan. You know why, not, why we're not going to touch on it here now? The reason is because when he talks about Ma'arifatul Abdi Dinahu, that the slave knows his religion, the Sheikh will go in, we will go in there, we'll go in it. And he's actually going to bring in this book the long hadith of J uh, Jibreel. Hadith of Jibreel is going to bring it here. And when we go there, we're going we're gonna to deal with it, inshallah ta'ala. Each one of those, Al Islam, what it means, Al Iman, what it means, and Al Ihsan, what it means. So the Sheikh is going to bring those when he talks about Ma'arifatul Deen al Islam bil Adilla. When he talks about knowing the religion of Islam with evidence. And that's the second asal, remember. We're still on the what? The first asal of the three foundations that the book is built on. Okay? So the Sheikh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, so after that, Al Islam and Al Iman, Al Ihsan. What does he go to? Waminhu from them is Addu'a. So he goes into the first one, which is Addu'a. So we're gonna go into Addu'a. The shir goes into Addu'a. <coughs> Dua So the Sheikh Rahimahullah, he started the first of them, which is a dua to supplicate to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Dua. A 
And that dua, it comes in two types as we spoke about previously. We said that dua is of two types. The first one is dua ibadah. And the second one is dua mas'ala. Dua ibadah. And, and the second one which is dua mas'ala. And we did touch on the difference between the two, right? The difference between dua ibadah. And the dua al mas'ala. But if you really look at the Quran, you tend to find that they are used together, both of them. Are you there? For example, when Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He says, Qawluhu Ta'ala Surah Ghafir, Wa qala Rabbukum udu'uni astajib lakum, inna alladhina yastakbiruna an ibadati. Allah says, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Udu'uni supplicate to me, astajib lakum, I will accept your supplication and your dua. Inna ladina verily the ones yastakbiruna who are arrogant, an ibadati, my ibadah. First of all, it was talking about dua, mas'ala, right? Are you there? It was actually talking about supplication. And then it went into, it used it as a dua, ibadah. Allah also uses it like that in many places in the Quran. Also, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. When he was talking about Nabi Allah Ibrahim, what did he say? Wa atazilukum wa matadruna min duni Allahi wa adru Rabbi asa Allah akuna bi dua Rabbi shakiya. Are you there? Allah Tabarak wa Taala says in the verse uh, ayah after it, like Ibrahim when he says to his people, Wa atazilukum, I'm going to leave you guys. Ha, wa matadruna min duni Allahi and that which you guys call to besides Allah Tabarak wa Taala. Wa adru Rabbi and I will supplicate to my Lord. So I do not become one who is transgressive, uh, a wrongdoer in, in, in his supplication to his Lord. A verse later, Allah Taala says, When Allah Ibrahim left them and he boycotted them, وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ And that which they worship besides Allah. So before what was used was what? تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ That which you guys call on to besides Allah. And then an ayah later, Allah says, فَلَمْ when he that, Because he said to them, I'm going to boycott you guys and what you guys are calling on to. And then when Allah spoke about Ibrahim, what did he say? He, when he boycotted them. Huh? And also that which they were worshipping besides Allah. Wa ta'ala. So then dua here has been explained and translated as to be mean. Ibadah. That's what Allah wa ta'ala does. In many places in the Quran, if you look at it, they are, they are used interchangeably. You see, they are used interchangeably. That dua ibadah and dua mas'ala, when they come in the Quran, they are both of them is meant by it. So when the word, the word dua comes in the Quran and the Sunnah, it actually means both of them. It actually means both of them. So if a person tries to narrow it down to a particular meaning from the two meanings without any evidences, then this is a tahakkum, this is dictatorship. And this is forcing the verses to be what it's not. This is forcing the verse to be what it's what it actually not. What we need to all realize, my beloved brothers and sisters, is that if the person calls on to Allah wa ta'ala and asks from him, Allah wa ta'ala is very close in accepting your dua. Giving you what you want, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ujibu da'a da'an. I accept the dua of the one that's supplicating to me. Allah says, When my slaves they ask of me, then I am close to them and I will support them and aid them and give them what they want. Ujibu da'a da'an. This ayah, if we really observe it, it emphasizes something very powerful, an aqidah issue. That, if you look at the Quran, for example, the Sahabas never asked Allah wa ta'ala something except Allah gave it to them. He always gave it to them. An answer was there for them in everything they asked for. Allah always says to them, Qul, O Muhammad, say this to them, say this to them, say this to them. صح؟ 
Whenever Allah tabar, the Sahaba asked Allah a question, for example, let's look at Surah, two, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 189, Allah says, قُلْ هِيَ مَوَاقِيتُ لِلنَّاسِ وَالْحَجِّ وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْيَتَامَى قُلْ إِصْلَاحٌ لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ Allah also says in another place, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ قُلِ الْعَفْءُ وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيضِ قُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَنْفَالِ قُلِ الْأَنْفَالُ لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ قُلِ الْأَنْفَالُ لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Allah also says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْرُوحُ قُلِ الْرُوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي They are asking you, Muhammad respond to them. They are asking you, Muhammad respond to them. But this particular place when it came, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي when my slaves ask me. When they ask me, Allah didn't say to the Prophet, say, say to them. Allah did not say to them, say to them. Say to them that I am close. Rather, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said it to them directly. He intervened and said, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am close, don't worry. He spoke to them directly. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ You see? فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ this meaning is actually emphasized by a hadith. There's a hadith that actually emphasizes on it, uh, uh, which is a hadith narrated by Imam Bukhari and Muslim. Min hadith Abi Musa al Ash'ari, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Kunna ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi safarin. We were with the Prophet sallallahu in one of the journeys. And this was what? The, it was one of, the, one of the battles which is Khaybar, the Battle of Khaybar. Um, whenever we got to a high place, we would say Allahu Akbar. This is a sunnah. When you go up, you go Allahu Akbar, and when you go down, you say Subhanallah. It's a sunnah. When you guys are coming up staircase, it's a sunnah to say Allahu Akbar when you're coming up. And it's a sunnah when you're going down from somewhere high and you're going down to say Subhanallah. It's a sunnah of the Prophet. النبي, the Prophet said to the companions, Ayyuha nas, O people. So uh, some of the riwayat mentions that their voices was a bit loud when they were saying Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, you see? So it's not just Allahu Akbar, but rather with Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. So their voices was a bit loud, the companions. The Prophet said to them, Ayyuhal nasu, O people, Irba'u ala anfusikum, fa'innakum, be good to yourselves. Don't scream and shout. Fa'innakum la tad'una asamman wa la ghaiban. You're not calling one who is deaf. And one who is absent. You are calling one who what? Who sees and he hears. And then he came to me. And I was saying to myself. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. He came to me and I was saying, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Do my ذكر. فقال he said to me, يا عبد الله بن قيس أو عبد الله بن قيس. قل say لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. فإنها كنز من كنوز الجنة. Say لا لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. For verily it's a treasure from the treasures of Jannah. Or he said, or he said, ألا أدلك Shall I tell you a wording? Here kanzu min kunuzil jannah. That is a treasure from the treasure of jannah. And the Prophet then told him, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi. So this hadith, what we want from it is that the Prophet said to them, Ayyuha nasu, irba'u ala anfusikum, fa innakum la tad'una asamman wa la ghaiman, walakin tad'una sami'an basira. That when you guys are supplicating and you're calling on to, Allah is hearing you. You're in a direct relation. You're in a direct contact with Allah Taala. There's nobody in between you. There's nothing that needs to respond between you. He can hear you. You don't have to scream from the top of your voice. Also, what strengthens that meaning is Qawlu Taala Surah Al Mujadala. What did Allah Taala tell us? قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوُرَكُمَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ Let's go to Musnad Imam Ahmad and Sunan Nasa'i and Ibn Majah and Bukhari narrated it Mu'allaqan and Imam Al-Bukhari narrated this hadith Mu'allaqan uh, without the chain of narration okay من حديث عائشة that the Aisha radiallahu anha said Alhamdulillah praises to Allah 
الذي وسع الذي وسع سبعه الأصوات. The one who is hearing is vast and encompasses all of things. He hears everything. لقد جاءت خولة خولة came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم تشكو زوجها. She was complaining about her husband. فكان يخفى علي كلامها. And I was in the next room. Aisha says, and her words was hidden from me. I couldn't really hear what she was saying. فأنزل الله الله sent down. قد سمع الله قول التي قول التي تجادلك في زوجها وتشتكي إلى الله والله يسمع تحاوركما. And Allah sends down a verse saying to her, I can hear you. I hear the speech of the woman who is speaking about her husband and complaining about him. Allah said, I can hear it. I heard everything she said. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he hears. And the slave should know that there's no need for him to get in to anything or anyone other than Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. He has Allah to ask. As I said, the dua is of how many types? It's of two types. Dua ibadah and dua mas'ala. Dua ibadah, as I said to you, is all of the points that the Shaykh rahimahullah is going to mention. Okay? All of the th- ones that he's going to mention, which is al khawfu wal raja wal tawakkul wal raghba wal rahba wal khushu' wal khashya wal inaba wal isti'ana wal isti'adha wal istighatha wal dhabhu wal nadhru wal salatu wal sawmu wal hajju. All of those are dua or ibadah. Like in dua or mas'ala, why they call dua or ibadah? It means that whenever you fast, Whenever you pray, whenever you pay zakat, whenever you go hajj, you are actually asking Allah through your ibadah. You're not necessarily supplicating, but you're asking through the ibadah. Whereas the dua u mas'ala, it means that you're asking him, you're actually begging him, you're lifting your hands up. Because through your salah, you actually want jannah. And through your salah, you're seeking aid, huh? you're seeking refuge from the hellfire. Whereas dua u mas'ala is talabu ma yanfa. You're asking Allah what's going to benefit you. And you're also seeking a refuge and you're asking Allah to protect you from whatever is going to harm you. Whatever is going to harm you. And they're very related, the two of them. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah says, فَكُلُّ دُعَاءٍ Every dua, which is, فَكُلُّ دُعَاءِ عِبَادَةٍ Every dua عِبَادَةٍ مُسْتَلْزِمٌ It necessitates لِدُعَاءِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ It necessitates the dua of مسألة Every dua عبادة necessitates dua مسألة وكل دعاء مسألة And every dua مسألة متضمن لدعاء العبادة It consists in it already It already, can, it already consists in it dua عبادة So that's how the verses that I mentioned before وَأَعْتَزِلُكُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَأَدْعُوا رَبِّي عَسَىٰ أَنْ لَا أَكُونَ بِدُعَاءِ رَبِّ الشَّقِيَّةِ فَلَمَّا اَعْتَزَلَهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَكُلًّا جَعَلْنَا نَبِيًّا So if you can see here the relationship between قول إبراهيم والإبراهيم said وَأَعْتَزِلُكُمْ وَمَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ And when Allah spoke about it, what did he say? فَلَمَّا اَعْتَزَلَهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ So you can see that the relationship Ibn Taymiyyah saw from it which is what? That the dua ibadah mustalzimun li dua mas'ala wa dua mas'ala mutadamminun li dua ibadah This kalab of Ibn Taymiyyah is very strong and it's a dabid which is very powerful It's a dabid which is very powerful Nowadays what you hear and that's very sad It's a very sad problem which is many people will come up to you and say to you they'll complain they'll say inna nad'u Allah kathiran we supplicate to Allah a lot we ask of him a lot to change the situation and yubaddil al-hal to change the situation that we're in to change our problems to uplift from the ummah the suffering and the problems that they are going through we ask of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala these issues and even then wa ma'a dhalika la nara taghyiran lil and we don't see no changing of our situation everything's still the same and you're telling us here that Allah hears that Allah wa ta'ala is close but then we don't see that closeness that you're talking about or that dua being accepted we don't see it so what's the problem 
the first point that the person has to realize is that we haven't truly understand the reality of a dua and we haven't understood it fahman sahihan a correct understanding and we haven't understood it the way Allah wanted us to understand it and we haven't also understood it the way Allah Taala's messenger understood it and you know why dua dua for it to happen is al-akhdu bil asbab the means has, has has to be taken the means have to be taken we have to follow the commands that we're told to follow we have to stay away from the prohibition that we were told to stay away from we have to stay at the boundaries that were set for us we have to stay within those boundaries we have to come with the prerequisites for the dua to be accepted from us we have to come with them and then when we submit ourselves to Allah, we humiliate ourselves to Him, and we lift our hands up to Him, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and we seek His help, then and only then will Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, give us what we ask for. And then and only then would He, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, change our situation and the way we are. If you look at the ending of Surah Al Imran, this, uh, this is an exact answer to that question. Which is Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he says from ayah 190 to ayah 194 In the world of the sun and 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 the sun ربنا 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 ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيتها وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد After that Allah says فاستجاب لهم ربهم أني لا أضيع عمل عامل الله says here an answer he says I accepted their dua فاستجاب لهم ربهم الله accepted their ربنا the ربنا that they were saying Allah ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيت وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فأمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تقلف الميعاد الله says فاستجبنا we accepted it أما فاستجاب لهم ربهم their Lord accepted the dua الله تبارك وتعالى but then he goes on to saying, Anni, I am not one. La udi'u, I do not forsake. Amala amilin, the action of the one who does action. Ha. Ah. So they came with actions. They came with righteous deeds. So before the supplication, look what they did. What did they do? Alladina yadkuroon Allah qiyaman wa qu'udan. They don't forget Allah When they're outside and about They're remembering Him Subhanahu wa ta'ala When they're sleeping And they're lying on their sides When they're sitting down They're remembering Him They're remembering Him Publicly and privately So when they become like that And then they say Rabbana ma khalaqta And look what they're doing They're pondering They're analyzing They're actually Even internalizing And spiritually nurturing themselves That now that when they said Rabbana ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. They actually deserve for Allah to accept their dua. They deserve for Allah تبارك وتعالى to accept their to accept their dua. That's not just the only hadith. That's not just the only ayah that proves or answers that question. Let's analyze and go and and look at the hadith Sahih Muslim, the hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Battle of Badr. The battle of what? Of Badr. When the Prophet ﷺ seeked aid and support and help from Allah Taala, he begged Allah Taala so much, حتى سقط رداءهم 
until the, the Prophet as rida, his cloth fell from ala man kibayhi, his shoulders, alayhi salatu salam. And then Abu Bakr will come from behind and he placed the, um, the garment back on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa shoulders. The hadith Ibn Abbas narrated and he said, Hadithari Umar ibn al-Khattab iqal, that Umar ibn al-Khattab told me, he said, كان لما كان يوم لما كان يوم بدر نظر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى المشركين وهم ألف. When it was a battle of Badr, the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام he looked at the disbelievers and they were one thousand. He saw a thousand standing right in front of him, in front of him. وأصحابه and his companions were ثلاثة 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 مئة. He only had three hundred men. وتسعة عشر رجلا. Three hundred and nineteen men. الله أكبر. There's a thousand in front of him. That's double him, more than double. Alayhi salatu salam. Fastakbala, the Prophet turned Nabiullah al Qibla. He turned towards the Qibla. Then he raised his hands up, alayhi salatu salam. Faja'ala yahtifu rabbahu. The Prophet alayhi salam, he started to call on to his Lord. Yahtifu bi rabbihi. He was calling on to his Lord. And this is what he said. اللهم أنجز لي ما وعدتني أو الله ففيل فمي what you promised me اللهم آتي ما وعدتني أو الله give me what you promised me اللهم إن اللهم إن تهلك هذه العصابة من أهل الإسلام لا تعبد في الأرض والله if you destroy this little group that I have with me today no one's gonna worship you on the face of this earth and the prophet went on to asking Allah and he went on to asking Allah تبارك وتعالى and raising his hand higher and higher and facing the Qibla until the Hatta Sakata Ridahu and Mankibehi, Fatahu Abu Bakr, Fahada Ridahu, Falka Ala Mankibehi. That the Prophet's garment that he had on his shoulders, he was lifting his hand up so high that it fell from his shoulders. Abu Bakr came and he took it from the ground and he put it on the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. He took place on the Prophet. And then he said, Ya Nabi Allah, Abu Bakr said, Oh Prophet of Allah. That's enough for you calling on to your Lord. That's enough. You've called on to him enough. Allah is going to fulfill for you and he's going to give you that which he has promised you. And then the, the statement of Allah came down. That Allah he sent down a thousand angels in support and help of the believers. So what did Allah said? فَأَمَدَّ اللَّهُ بِالْمَلَائِكَةِ Through the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He supported and He aid, aided the believers. But if you look, if you look, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, He came with the asbab, the means. He brought his companions to the battlefield. He made sure that He nurtured them with the correct understanding of the religion. Alayhi salatu wasalam. But as for us Muslims, to eat that which is haram and to not care what comes into our households, to do every sin that comes to our minds, and then after that we raise our voices and we cry and we supplicate to him and we ask of him, then that really doesn't show that we are ones who really want the supplication to be accepted. So in order for our situation to change, we have to change our situation first. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah will not change the situation of a people until they change their situation. Surah Al-Ra'd, Ayah 11. And Allah also says in Surah Al-Anfal, Ayah 53, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لم يكن مغيرا نعمة أنعمها على قوم حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم. And Allah is not one who changes a people from a blessing that He put them. He doesn't take them out of that blessing until what? حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم until they change their situation and they go against Allah's command and they show disbelief towards Him سبحانه وتعالى and they don't show gratitude towards Him. Allah then takes away from them the good that they have. Imam Muslim, he narrated in his Sahih on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ayyuhal nasu, O people, 
إن الله طيب الله تبارك وتعالى is good لا يقبل إلا طيبا and he doesn't accept he doesn't accept he doesn't take and accept accept that which is good وإن الله أمر المؤمنين verily Allah has commanded the believers بما أمر به المرسلين that which he has commanded the messengers Allah has commanded the believers exactly what he has commanded the messengers by saying to them يا أيها الرسل أو messengers كلوا من الطيبات eat from the good وعملوا صالحا come with righteous actions إني بما تعملون عليم I am one who knows everything which you do وقال Allah says to the believers the same thing يا أيها الذين آمنوا those of you who believe كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم eat from the good in which your Lord has provided you with ثم ذكر الرجل then the Prophet told the story of a man يطيل السفر who went into a long journey أشعة أغبر he's dusted his hair has dusted it uh, sandy يمد يديه إلى السماء he lifts his hands up in the sky he says يا رب my Lord يا رب my Lord ومطعبه حرام but his food was haram this man ate haram ومشربه حرام he drank haram وملبسه حرام the clothing he's actually wearing is haram ووضي بالحرام he was nurtured and cultivated upon haram فأنا يستجاب لذلك how would this individual's dua be accepted he j- if you ponder wallahi you look at this hadith he used the same supplication that the people in surah ali imran used rabbana my lord he said the same wording he said my lord he begged it. allah tabarak wa ta'ala he lifted his hands up he lifted his hands up and we know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna allah hayyun kareem allah is generous allah is kind if his slave lifts his hands up in the air and he asks of Allah, Allah is shy to let your hands go back and not give you what you asked for. But Allah watched this individual. Allah actually watched this individual. What's even more amazing and shocking is that even the disbelievers, Allah gives it to them when they ask. The disbelievers, when he's in the middle of the ocean and the sea, and he asks Allah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something, Allah gives it to him. Allah gives it to him of what he asks for. When he gets away, when he comes with tawheed and he thinks he throws his idols away and he starts asking Allah with sincerity, Allah accepts it from him. But the this the believer here, Allah has it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah doesn't. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam told us in a hadith and Imam Ahmad narrated his musnad. And other than Imam Ahmad narrated it, بسند حسن with a sound chain of narration. On the authority of who? Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. رضي الله تعالى عنه that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam has said, ما من مسلم there is not a believer. يدعو بدعوة He makes a supplication. ليس فيها اسم There's no sin in it. ولا قطيعة رحم And it's, there is not in it the cutting of ties of kinship. Illa a'tahu Allah except Allah will give him bima biha except that which Allah will give him that which he asked for. Except Allah will give to him what? Ihda thalathin. Except Allah will give to him one of three. Pay attention. There is not a believer who supplicates to Allah and he doesn't ask something that is a sin. And he doesn't also ask that which involves the cutting of a family member and the cutting of the ties of kinship. It doesn't involve that. Except Allah will give him one of three. Except Allah will give him one of three. إِمَّا أَن تُعَجَّلَ لَهُ دَعْوَتُهُ One is either Allah will hasten your dua for you. The response. And He will give you the response quickly. وَإِمَّا أَن يَدَّخِرَهَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ Or Allah will store it for you for the hereafter. Or, وَإِمَّا أَنْ يَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ مِنَ السُّوءِ مِثْلَهَا Or else, Allah diverts from you an evil like it. So my beloved brothers and sisters, the way Allah wants to accept your dua is up to Him. 
he does it the way he wishes. It doesn't always have to be hastened for you in this world. Don't give up my beloved brothers and sisters. And don't give up. Also the person shouldn't give up. He should not give up. The Prophet sallallahu said كما في الصحيحين as is in Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira يستجاب لأحدكم one of you's dua is accepted ما لم يعجل as long as he's not hasty يقول he says دعوت I supplicated I supplicated فلم يستجاب لي and my dua wasn't accepted in another wording Imam Muslim says قيل يا رسول الله ما الاستعجال the Prophet was asked what's meant by استعجال hastiness he says, the Prophet then said, يقول, that this person keeps saying, قد دعوت وقد دعوت, I asked and I supplicated and I supplicated. ولم أرى يستجيب لي فيستحسر عند ذلك ويدع الدعاء. I asked Allah, I supplicated to him and he hasn't given me what I asked for. So he gives up and he stops supplicating. That's what it means. This is my beloved brothers and sisters. For today's session, inshallah ta'ala, and today's lesson on the Lathatul Usul, I'm going to stop there, bi'ithnillah al-kareem. Anything which I said that was wrong, a shortcoming, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَانِ مِنْ It's from me, a shaytan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.